Stop me if you know this old rabbinic joke. A Jew is shipwrecked and stranded alone on a desert island. On the first day, he builds two synagogues, one to pray in and one he would not step foot in. Funny, yes. Prophetic, no. Because it fails to anticipate our current circumstance, the concept of a third synagogue, the one you cannot step into. That's where I am right now, kinda, as are we all. Together we are trying to solve some kind of Talmudic riddle. In the age of COVID, how can we be a synagogue when we can hardly even be a minion? Good yom to my fellow BHS members. My name is Mark Katz. And in these unusual times, I've been asked to deliver an unorthodox annual appeal, unlike our usual one delivered from the pulpit of a church. That's not weird at all. My family has been members of BHS since we moved to Brooklyn in 2007 as part of the great 21st century Riaspora, returning to the borough our forebears fled. Since then, we've made it a focal point of our lives. And along the way, we've met many thoughtful and engaging people and made some wonderful friends. But if my face only looks vaguely familiar to you, you are more likely to know the voice of my wife, Jennifer Zaslow. Jenny sings with the choir and, at High Holy Day services, can be heard in various trios, duos, and solos. And again, once again this year, a Haftorah to boot. And if you don't know Jenny, maybe you have a child who knows our son, Elias. Elias is a proud graduate of the BHS preschool, Tov Maod Cum Laude, he graduated, and is now in the sixth grade of our Hebrew school. Just recently, our thoughts have turned to his bar mitzvah almost exactly two years away. Oh my God. Between now and then, he will continue his religious education at BHS and, God willing, will return to Eisner, the URJ summer camp premised in living Judaism, where I also once spent 10 formative summers. Oh yeah, me. Who am I? And why did Rabbi Lip ask me to deliver this annual appeal? Oh, I was hoping you knew. Well, here's what I remember from Serge's call. He reminded me of my occupation. I am a writer who writes speeches for leaders and other public people. I am also a board certified humor writer. As you have already determined, I am uproariously funny. Often I combine these skills to create presentations that are delivered to critical audiences at a crucial time in an unconventional way. And according to Serge, that is exactly where we are and what is needed. Desperate times indeed. Which brings me back to that opening joke, because today I'd like to talk to you about that synagogue we currently can't step foot in, this one right here. So much has changed since last Kol Nidre. When we ask God to inscribe us for another year in the book of life, no one fully explained what that life might look like. Things were going just fine right up until about Purim, but now we are six months into this end of day scenario and as of yet, no Messiah has arrived. In these past six months, the BHS we've always known has dramatically altered. And although, and although the reasons are regrettable, the transformation has been remarkable. Today, through the magic of high-speed internet, our Shabbat and these High Holy Day services are live streamed directly into your home. And in the process, our entire clergy has turned into a team of televangelists. Our Hebrew school has also migrated to online learning. By the way, I don't know who came up with the name home shooling, but that person deserves a raise. Even our real life events have made the leap to virtual. From brises to shivas, bar mitzvahs and weddings, we still congregate virtually as a community to celebrate simchas and to share our tears of joy and sadness. By the way, if you haven't figured it out yet, the trick is to bring your own babka. These solutions are imperfect, but invaluable just the same. But we've also been up against obstacles for which there are no known workarounds. As it has been to so many families, this cruel virus has been unkind to the finances of our synagogue. The bottom line on our bottom line is that our revenue has taken a pretty serious hit. For some, this may seem counterintuitive. Why would it cost more to operate a synagogue we utilize far less? I mean, just think of what we are saving in wine, challah, and stolen yarmulkes alone. But that's not how it works. 
or at least how it was according to how it was explained to me a couple of times. Here are some of the numbers that measure the impact of this pandemic on our annual budget. Our 515 families have now been reduced to around 490. So let's start with the deficit in our annual membership dues. The enrollment at our preschool dropped from 100 to 80, which can also be measured in the $300,000 in lost tuition. Of course, our biggest expense by far is our staff. The salaries and benefits of our clergy, administrators, and educators comprise 70% of our budget. And while we were forced to cut back on those who work part-time or on sub or on subcontract, the synagogue has not laid off any of its full-time staff. Maybe that's not what a McKinsey consultant would have told us to do, but our Jewish values did. But numbers alone can't tell this story. In the past few weeks, I've sat at least six feet away from BHS leaders who've told me how the disrupted lives of our members affect the operation of our synagogue and conversely, how our synagogue tends to these members in distress. Many of these stories begin the same way, with a text or email from a congregant to Serge or Sue Gold, our executive director, that reads, please call, or we need to talk. Some are calling to say that for reasons beyond their control, they are moving away and sadly leaving BHS as well. Other calls are even tougher than that. These uncomfortable conversations almost always involve a furloughed job, lost income, the fear or fact of illness, and the impossible choice of a merciless cash crunch. These are members upended by chaos who can no longer afford to pay all or some of their dues. But more often than not, conversations that start with a member saying, I can no longer afford to belong to BHS, end like this. With a, with a leader saying, you are not going anywhere. We can make this work. Hearing those stories make me proud to be a member of BHS because it is the strength of our congregation that allows Serge or Molly or Sue to respond with such kindness. That is all of us saying to a fellow congregant, you will continue to be part of our Jewish community. That your child still has a place in our Hebrew school and will remain on a path to become a bar or bat mitzvah on our bima. That your teenager can continue in Hebrew high school, learning how to see the world through a Jewish lens and putting their Jewish values to work by way of Bugsy. That if you are older and live alone, you will still be connected to our BHS family and if needed, receive acts of kindness and care from our dedicated chesed team. And so with that response, our BHS leaders have circled the square of this Talmudic riddle. How can we be a synagogue when we can hardly even be a minion? The answer is that our synagogue is not a building. It is a community. There, conundrum solved. Over the course of decades, our congregation has made this community strong. And on this Kol Nidre, we must commit to keeping it strong. As members and as donors, many of you have contributed to BHS for many years. Thank you. But to be clear, our finances rely on much more than membership dues alone. The all but unspoken arrangement of our membership dues is only spoken once a year, and that's in this annual appeal. So listen up. Yes, every member pays annual dues, but those dues do not add up to the cost of running BHS not even close. Instead, they are intentionally kept as low as possible so every member can contribute to our costs. The day-to-day -day costs of running our synagogue are something we share, but not necessarily in equal measure. Our financial model requires those who can pay more to pay more. That's not me talking, that's math. So let's return once more to the numbers. Our current budget gap of $290,000 is also this year's fundraising goal. That's about $100,000 more than we've needed to raise in previous years. But as we know, this is anything but an ordinary year. Now, some good news, finally. This ambitious goal kicks off with a promising start. 
I am pleased to announce that a circle of congregants has already stepped forward with a pledge to match the first $90,000 in new dollars we raise. Let me explain. If last year you donated $1,800 to this annual appeal, and this year you donate $3,600, that additional $1,800 will be matched by this grant, effectively making your gift equal $5,400. Someone please check my math on that. Don't thank me. Thank those generous donors. And you know how, by making them pay up. Before I go, let's revisit that Jew on the island who built a whole extra synagogue just to make himself laugh. We are not that guy. Our generation of Brooklyn Heights Jews is not the one who built the synagogue in 1959. Instead, we are the congregants whose responsibility it is to maintain the synagogue that in turn sustains our community. And in this moment of peril, we've been handed an additional duty to see BHS safely to the other side of a catastrophic event. In this new year, we can be the Jews on the island who rebuild the synagogue and the community it serves better and stronger than before. And if all goes well, if our prayers are answered, we can all reunite soon, not just virtually and spiritually, but physically, right here in our beloved synagogue, filling the seats in our sanctuary, the chairs in our classrooms, and the beds in our shelter once again. So, from my family to yours, the Shana Tova, a year of rebuilding, and let it start with the commitment you make today in the lunar year 5781 and the fiscal year 2020. And as they say in no other shul but BHS, next year in Plymouth Church. In the meantime, good Yom Tov, a meaningful Yom Kippur, and an easy fast to us all. Thank you and good night.